Hello, my name is Leila Radionovna. I am a teacher of English languages. Let's start our lesson. Today our theme is analyzing and describing phobias and frightening situations. Now looking at the picture, try to answer what we will talk about today. Dentist. Lightning and spider. A strange events. B who is who? C phobias and fears. D reading. Right, it is phobias and fears. In our life, we use a spectrum of emotions. For example, it is joy when we're very very happy. It is anger when we angry. It is sadness when we very sad. Fatigue when we tired from our walk. It is fright and of course fear. Fear and phobias. Now pay attention on the video. Are you afraid of anything? The truth is most of us are at least a little afraid of something. Bees or wasps, for example, the dark or taking exams. So fear is a basic human emotion. In fact, we actually need it to survive. But fear is not always a good thing. People who have a phobia are extremely afraid of something. There are phrases related to emotions. Let's remember them. Scream loudly. Shake like a leaf. The heart beats faster. Legs turn to jelly. Feel ashamed. Be laughed at. Be embarrassed. Be depressed. There are different feelings. Sadness. Grust. Depression. Depressia. Embarrassment. Smushenia. Nervousness. Nervosnost. Anger. Gnev. Fear. Strach. Jealousy. Zavist. Happiness. Shastia. Joy. Radist. There are idioms related to emotions. Let's remember them. Be scared to death. Be over the moon. Be green with envy. Have a long face. Have butterflies in the stomach. Go bright red. Go through the roof. What is the difference between fears and phobias? Fears natural basic human emotions. Phobias unnatural extreme fears. Common fears, heights, the dark, spiders, bees, wasps, snakes, and so on. What is a fear? Fear is one of the most basic human emotions. We need it to survive. Fear helps protect us. It can be like a warning, a signal for us to be careful. What is a phobia? A phobia is an intense fear reaction to a particular thing or situation. Agoraphobia. Agoraphobia is a fear of being in crowded places or open spaces. Claustrophobia. Claustrophobia is a fear of being in enclosed spaces. Aviophobia. Aviophobia is a fear of flying. Brontophobia. Brontophobia is a fear of lightning. Acrophobia. The fear of heights is a fear of spiders. Misophobia is a fear of being contaminated. Xenophobia is a fear of strangers. Overcoming phobias. People can learn to overcome phobias by gradually facing the fears as somebody gets used to a feared object or situation. Making shapes out of them. Look, that one looks like Pikachu. <laughs> When yes, all of a sudden, a freaky nun demon jumps out at you. Sorry if that scared you. We all get afraid and feel fear. 
maybe not like that example, but at different times. Seeing a spider, a loud noise, or a creak on a floorboard late at night can strike fear suddenly right through our bodies. But what is this feeling of fear? Where does it come from? And why do we even have it? Make sure you hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to be notified about future videos. The feeling of fear can make your heart race, breath quicken, scream, sweat, pupils dilate, freeze you in place, and can even cause involuntary urination. Uh -oh. These are all stress reactions caused by our limbic system, a chain reaction in areas of the brain that work together to control our built-in fight-or-flight response. We have this built into us to help us react to and survive threats. Imagine prehistoric primitive you being confronted by a predator, say the extinct flesh-eating giant Piccolosaurus. You would see this and your brain would say, look, that wants to eat you, get away from it now to survive. Without feeling fear, you might say, hey Piccolosaurus, what's for lunch? And it would reply, you, and gobble you up. If not for fear, we would most likely not have survived as a species. Let's have a look how the brain has compartments that communicate to react to a threat. There are two simultaneous processes going on which decide how we react. The low road is instinctual and impulsive. React now, ask questions later. When a perceived threat happens, whether it's an unexpected sound, motion, or any other sense, the brain says danger, engage fight or flight response now. The sensory stimulus is sent into the thalamus, the area of the brain in charge of receiving initial sensory signals and relaying them to the next destination. As the thalamus does not know whether this is real danger, but there is a possibility, it shoots the signal straight to the amygdala, which is the brain's alarm system. The amygdala sends a danger signal to the hypothalamus, also referred to as the lizard brain, which is responsible for synthesizing and secreting hormones. It reacts and sends out neurochemicals and hormones including adrenaline into the body, increasing things like breathing and heart rate, dilating pupils to maximize further visual information input, and pumping more blood into our muscles so we are primed to run or fight. The high road takes a slightly longer route considering the scenario before deciding what action to take. The original stimuli is again sent to the thalamus, but instead of escalating this to the amygdala, it is sent through to the sensory cortex, which processes and determines meaning from the stimuli. What exactly did you see, hear, taste, smell or feel? It sends the gathered information onto the hippocampus, which stores memory for more context and asks whether it has experienced this before, what did it mean that time, and what was the outcome. It also considers other factors that might help give it context. Is that noise my cat in the other room? Did I leave the TV on, etc. The hippocampus takes a measured approach and tells the fired-up amygdala whether to shut down and stop sending signals to the hypothalamus or to continue with the fight-or-flight reaction engaged by the low road. This is why we feel a momentary rush of terror before calming down in a situation we evaluate to not be dangerous after all. Lots of people actually seek out fear, enjoying being and feeling scared, watching horror films, playing scary games or even going on a roller coaster. When our fight-or-flight response is triggered, we release chemicals which are similar to that of when we are excited or happy. When we trigger this in what we perceive as a safe environment, it is thought that we can then enjoy being scared and the chemicals running around our body that are akin to high arousal states. What was the last thing that made you scared or jump? And do you like being scared or do you hate it? Let us know below. Each person fights differently with fears and phobias, antidepressants, meditation, going to a psychologist, or just looking fears in the eyes. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. Thanks for your attention. Goodbye.